Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 78 of Gains, and this one is titled Cat Cuddles. The door closed slowly behind you, leaving you and Bakugo both in the darkness of his room, his arms still firmly around you. I had to see you, you whispered into him, reaching your arms back around his back to hug him back. He held you tighter, not saying anything, just holding you. I'm okay, you said softly. I'm not hurt. I don't blame you for anything. I blame you. He grunted, still refusing to let you go. Don't, he said softly. Let's not get stuck into this. It's in the past. I'm fine. You're... Are you okay? I'm fine, he replied grumpily. See? Okay, you're fine, so let's move on from this, he said, trying to make him feel better. He's right, though. I don't deserve to be by your side, Bakugo said, his hug tightening around you. Listen, he's just being protective. You would have said the same thing if it was in the reverse. In fact, E would have been in the nurse's bed beside me if you'd gotten to him. I think he got off pretty lightly, he said with a smile into his chest. I need to prove myself, Bakugo grunted. Prove I can be a worthy boyfriend. You already are. Stop this negative talk. You always go off at me for talking bad, so now you stop too, okay? He said, fighting your way out of his hug and pushing him with one hand on his waist and the other hand on his shoulder back to his bed. He didn't try and stop himself and fell backwards onto the bed and he sat down next to him. You weren't sitting for very long as he did a crunch and wrapped his arms around your middle and then lay back, yanking your body on top of his. With a small squeal of surprise, you flipped your arms and legs around until you were lying semi on top of him, with one leg between his and your torso half across his. I don't want to put too much pressure across your chest, Katsuki, he said, trying to move off to his side, but he grabbed you and pulled you further on top of him. You're a featherweight, he said holding you on his chest. Um, <laughs> I'm really not, he started to say. Shut up or I'll kill you, he growled, and you gave a half giggle and then stopped what you were saying and lay your head down just under his chin. Sorry, he said with a smile. Better, he grunted. You lay like that for a while, just happy in his arms. He seemed very comfortable there and wouldn't let you move so much, so you just resigned to the fact that this was probably where you'd end up sleeping for the rest of the night if he didn't let you go. Um, Katsuki? You asked suddenly. When did you start liking me? This had been something that had been playing on your mind for a bit now. There would never been an appropriate moment to ask, since most of the time you spent together was either training or out in public, but now seemed like a really good time. When you were in the hallway with your mum, he grunted. Your head shot up. Wait, before I even started at school? When I was even bigger than now? When I was staring at the floor and reeking of insecurity? Your jaw hit his chest. You couldn't believe it had been from the very beginning. Yeah, but I wanted to punch you, Bakugo said, and you let out a confused sound. Eh? What? What do you mean? You quizzed him. I knew with just one look at you that you were strong, but you were holding back. Pissed me off, he said, and you let out a laugh. It's not that you were laughing at him, it's just you were laughing at how confusing this all was. Um, I still don't understand. How did you know? You asked. I could tell, he said. But I watched to see if I was correct. Ah, okay. Yeah, looking back now, I do remember you seeming to know a lot about me, he said. My moment for you that stands out is when we turned up in the van to move into UA and you confronted my dad. You smiled at him with your hand resting gently on his bandaged chest. Confront that bastard 30 times over if I have to, Bakugo grunted. Even he doesn't understand how powerful you are. I don't get it, he sighed, resting your head back down on his chest. I'm so lucky and I don't even know how I ended up with this luck. Bakugo placed the broad side of his finger under your chin and lifted your head back up so he could look at you. Even in the dark his eyes almost glowed and you stared into them waiting for him to say something but he just held your gaze. For a second there was unspoken tension pulling you into him and you both looked at each other's lips before you coughed slightly and ducked your head back away. What? he asked. I, sorry, I just, I think I was almost about to kiss you then. He said shyly, keeping her head turned away. Why would you stop? He asked in a husky voice. You looked back into his eyes. One of his arms still wrapped around you, and his other was now tucked behind his head to hold his head up a little. Um, well, we also need to include E in this. Are, are we ready for kissing? You asked bashfully. I feel like that might be the next level that we're not ready for, especially if you and E aren't on talking terms. You need to make it up to him. Yeah. Bakugo grunted, letting his head flop back to his pillow. But don't go yet. I want more time with you. 
Okay, he said softly, before lying your head back down on his chest. There wasn't a lot of talking done after that, but you stayed well after curfew. You had tried to leave a few times, but Bakugo wouldn't let you go, so you had stayed way longer than expected. Finally, he let you go, and you went back to your room to sleep. You woke much later the next morning and looked at the time on your phone. It read 9.30am, and you sighed and put your phone back down for a second. Recovery Girl's quirk had worked wonders for any wounds that you had, but you still had a mild headache, and your eyes still hurt a bit too. As I did say I could take the next two days to recover, I really do feel like I need to take it slowly than these next few days, you thought, before lifting your phone back up to read the messages there. Both of your boys had messaged you privately, but the group chat between you three was void of activity. So they're still not talking, you thought with a small sigh, before replying to each of them and reassuring them that you were fine, but that you needed to, some time to recover. They both responded to you, offering to bring your homework to you. Well, that was Kiri who offered, and Bakugo was the one who told you that he would bring it and make you do it, but either way, he had two offers of help that you couldn't refuse. You were so grateful for both of them. Oh, a kind of cute chapter. Stay tuned for chapter 79 coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.